All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touched. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Ben White is suing Arnie Ralston in the amount of $2,150. Mr. White claims Mr. Ralston lied about the start time of a battle reenactment and says the defendant should reimburse him for uniform and travel expenses. Ben, I understand that you and Arnie know each other. How first, I want to understand the relationship. How do you all know each other? Your Honor, we are both members of a reenactment organization. We're historical reenactors. Wow, fascinating. And so is that why you're dressed the way you're dressed? Oh, yes, this is just how I dress, madam. And how long have you been doing this? Um, we've been reenactors in our organization for about eight years. I've been historical reenacting for probably about 20. So I understand from the complaint that this is a reenactment of the what war? Of the American Revolution, Your Honor. All right. And I understand also that you are quite an expert in this area. Well, there are two types of reenactors. Please tell me. Um, some, I'm fascinated by this. Some are, um, we're all living historians that try to portray history as it happened for the public, for ourselves, for each other. And um, there are some reenactors that put a great deal of effort into research and portrayal that really um, go the extra mile. Um, and we would call those progressives or stitch counters. Um, and some people um, don't put in that much effort. For instance, in the 18th century, um, anyone in polite society would have shaven. There was no one that wore a beard. Think of George Washington or Benjamin Franklin, Your Honor. There, there's no one that, that sports a beard in the 1700s. So a month ago, I, even though I usually have a glorious beard, I shaved for the occasion and it cost me nothing, whereas some reenactors don't make that effort. Interesting, that is fascinating. So you all are in the same society, but you're on opposite sides of my courtroom, so what is going on with you? Well, I'm, I'm suing Mr. Ralston for the damages um, from uh, him preventing me from portraying um, a captain at the re recent reenactment. Um, he intentionally misled me so that I could not take the field in time, and so I'm um, suing for my damages of the uniform that I purchased and my travel. All right, so Arnie there, what is your explanation? Tell me, tell me what happened. So what happened is pretty clear. He got late and uh, he wasn't able to make it. What time are you supposed to be there? Let's start there. Well, what time are you supposed to be there? Your Honor, I have the event schedule. All right. And the event schedule was the battle was to start at 6. 6 a.m.? But, a. but right. um, I was informed when I went to the tavern the night before, um, we were all in having a convivial and jovial experience together. In other um, words, you all were drinking? Yes. Okay. And we were at, we were at the tavern, and, um, well, he said uh, that had I been informed of the battle change by a signal lantern. And everyone was laughing at me and, and uh, you know, saying that I would communicate via signal lantern. Because oh, uh, right. I, okay, I actually I don't right. use my phone. Right. Paul, for, Paul Revere and the, okay, Yes, got it. one okay. if by land and two if by sea. Yeah, got it. Okay. And one everyone was land. laughing. And so I thought that the time had now changed to 7 a.m. And so that's when I went. Um, so hold I it right there. Hold it right there. So you all are in the tavern. Mm -hmm. What did you say to him? So what happened is uh, we were at what he calls the tavern. It was just a regular bar. Um, we were at a happy hour, you know, celebrating. He was dressed up, uh, the only one in character, uh, boasting like, you know, the battle started the next day. So I don't know why he was in costume. But anyways, um, I told him at that time, because I received an email saying that the, the time changed from 6 to 7 a.m. Okay. But later that night, at 11 Do you 30. have the copy of the email? Absolutely, I do. I, I have the copy that. of the two emails. All right. Later that night at 11 uh, 36, to be precise, we got another email saying that it was switched back to 6 a.m. And because he didn't have he, email or text. Yes, uh, he, did, he wasn't informed. I didn't see him uh, at 11. I guess he was 
even though know, he was staying else, in the hotel room next to me. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, Arnie. You're right next door. You know the man doesn't have text. He doesn't have internet. He doesn't have a cell phone. Why not just knock on his door? You know, he's, he's really, really serious and involved in that stuff. So I assume that someone else told him, right? And well, then in I the was next involved, morning, Your Honor. I flew in the next in morning, that, for this. excuse me, let me finish. In the next morning, I assume that he was already there, like around five in the morning, probably touching the grass, milling the air, whatever <laughs> he think people were doing back then. Of course. But it is not my responsibility. I am not his, his uh, secretary. And I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, Ben, we're going to have to have a conversation about you coming into from the Revolutionary War to the... No, the however, we're both, or, we're both leaders in our organization, and there's something about the integrity of leadership in, a, in an organization. Even though we are, you know, dressing up and playing soldiers, it is, he, we are both leaders in this organization, and it was his duty to inform me of the time change. He knew that I didn't have email, and so what did he do? He sent me an email. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett, yeah, maybe, I, I mean, I was tired, and honestly, I could have probably knocked on the door to check that he was in his room. We both love history. Some of us are able to switch back from reality to not reality. Some of us uh, love history more than others, Your Honor. And later, the following day, I sent another email because there was another, another leak. And then eventually, nine days later, and it finally got fixed. Unfortunately, it was too late because Karen's stuff was uh, ruined, and uh, there just was no sense of urgency. Closed captioning provided by. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Ben White, who is suing Arnie Ralston for $2,150. You knew he didn't have email. Everyone Why did you send him an email? Your Honor, everyone knew that he didn't have his cell phone. He decided not to have a cell phone, yet he slept in a motel. I mean, either you're like 100% in it, living in a tent on the battlefield, or not. Uh, but everyone- You're getting off track. If you didn't want to go outside into the next room and knock on the door in the hall at 11.36 at night, I get it. Why didn't you just pick up the phone? There was a phone in there, because he's in a hotel, right? And just call him. There's been plenty of drinking that night. I, I must have fallen asleep, you know, a little bit. With so how did you drink. know about the 1136 email if you? Because fell I do have my cell phone on me, which most of us do. We all use social media and our um, phones to know if there's any safety issues or any changes that and happen. And Your Honor, that when day. we were at the tavern, that's all he could talk about is the social media. That there were going to be cameras there. That the public crowd was going to be huge. That there was going to be news coverage, and indeed at the next battle when I arrived late because I had been informed of the late start time. The British had already been halfway across the field. The cannons were going off. And I look across the field, and who is leading the men with his sword out but the defendant? Oh, Arnie, did you set him up on this? Absolutely not. I did inform him when I knew that they changed the time from 6 to 7. I didn't have to do that, and I did. So if... Well, actually, he would have been better off because he would have been there at 6. Exactly. But... Oh, my goodness. But once you knew, you, you informed him of the first change. Yeah. And actually, if you hadn't done that, he would have been there at 6. But he thought it was at 7. You knew it was changed back to 6. You Absolutely. all in the same society. Wouldn't just... Common decency, say, look, man. So listen, I'm, I'm. We got a, we got an earlier call. Today. Right. Come on. No, I understand, and, and we, we do our best to be courteous with each other, of course. But you know, that night before, he, he was boasting and made fun of me in front of everyone uh, for using my phone to talk to my wife. That I just was checking on her. He made a fool of myself. He made, he, he came out as a complete jerk in front of everyone. And so, you know, the, the next morning I was like, yeah, maybe, I, I mean, I was tired. And honestly, I could have probably knocked on the door to check that he was in his room, which I, for some reason, assumed he wasn't. I assumed he knew from anyone else in the bar, but I must have told him. He's the only one who's not using his phone. Like, he's using an old watch now. Um, so, I mean, some of us, we both love history. Some of us are able to switch back from reality to not reality. Some of us uh, love history more than others, Your Honor. So let me just say this. Some people Let's have get the down real to life. the nitty-gritty of what really happened. 
You're saying that the twenty, the two thousand one hundred fifty dollars uh, really represents your costume and your travel, and you really feel like Arnie sabotaged you, and you didn't get to play the role. We're both members of the Boston Brigade, and I used to live here in Boston. Um, and I, I live in Montana now, and so the colonel had told me that I could be the captain, and so I flew out here um, for, for this event, and I got the brand new captain's uniform, and it, it was from a Massachusetts regiment since we're in Massachusetts, and so that's what I uh, was portraying. I actually, I'm a red coat now in, in Montana, sorry. How wonderful. So let me just tell you, Ben, I think that Arnie could have done more. But legally, I cannot hold him responsible for your travel and your uniform under these circumstances because it's your responsibility to keep up with what's going on. And I don't want to change your way of life. I am not passing judgment on your decision not to have a cell phone or internet. But you have to, because you don't have the means by which they seem to all be communicating, you've got to figure out some way that you can triple check these schedules. And you know, I don't think that Arnie did right by you. I don't, I don't, I don't. And there was some, I wish there was something I could do um, because I think he just really wasn't right about this. And I think you could have done a lot more than you did, but legally, I cannot find you responsible for these damages today. But come on, he's in the same society. Let's try to be more humane to each other. Can we please, please do that? Sure. So with that, I will dismiss your case, and I wish you both well. We'll stand adjourned. Paul Ross. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I respect the decision of the worshipful Hatchett, but this does not bode well for your future career in the Continental Army. I'm, I'm sorry that what happened, uh, but you know, on to the next battle. Coming up. So you didn't get a trained professional out there to check the situation out. You just said, oh, I don't see a leak, and you went on about your business. That doesn't make sense to me. Closed captioning provided by You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Karen Hofkins is suing Holly Witherspoon in the amount of $3,049. Ms. Hofkins claims her landlord failed to repair a nagging water leak and says it caused damage to her belongings. Good day. Karen, I understand that you're suing your former landlord for damage that was done because of some water getting down into your apartment. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So tell me what happened. So I came home from work one day and my um, neighbor who lives in the apartment directly below me said that um, her sink was clogged and she wanted to check out my sink to see if it was also clogged because our sinks share the same pipeline since we're neighbors. Mm -hmm. So her and I both went upstairs to my apartment and lo and behold, we discover that my apartment is flooded there's a leak coming out of the ceiling where the, the ceiling fan is. And immediately I went upstairs to see if there was something going on in the apartment above me. And um, that's my, my witness is my neighbor. Um, and he said that his dishwasher had been broken and Stand, leaking. Come and join us. Thank All you, right. Mm -hmm. So Lamont, you live in the apartment directly above Karen's, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And that, tell me what ha was happening in your apartment, please. So my dishwasher, uh, there, a small leak started happening. Uh, it was kind of manageable at the time. I emailed uh, Ms. Witherspoon about it. Uh, I didn't... So did you receive an email about the leak in his dishwasher? Yes, I received the email from him. And did, how did you respond? I respond, I came out and I didn't see anything wrong with the dishwasher. I didn't see a leak or anything. That was six days later, Your Honor, she responded. Six days later. Six days is much too long. Then what happened? So she came up and there was no leak at that time. Uh, and then the following day, I sent another email because there was another, another leak. And then eventually nine days later, it finally got fixed. Unfortunately, it was too late because Karen's stuff was uh, ruined and uh, there just was no sense of urgency uh, for this issue and that's why we think she was negligent in her approach to a, a leaking dishwasher, Your Honor. Coming up. 
in the lease, it says that I'm only, only responsible for fixing what's in the building, the sink, no private property, not, not her laptop, not her silk sheets. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Karen Hofkins, who is suing Holly Witherspoon for negligence. So now we're talking nine days later, and from your perspective, what happened then? Um, I, the maintenance man came out, but he needed time to order a part so he can get the dishwasher up and running again. So not only will you have a new leak, you couldn't use your dishwasher. That's correct, Your Honor. So what happens now? This, this water from the dishwasher comes down into your apartment? Mm-hmm. It flooded my apartment. It destroyed my things, um, my laptop, my speakers. And I work with musicians. So now, like, I've been out of being able to travel and to do what I enjoy doing because so, my So, Ms. Witherspoon, do you have a background in plumbing? Um, no, I don't. So you didn't get a trained professional out there when even six days later to check the situation out. You just said, oh, I don't see a leak, and you went on about your business, and then nine days later, then somebody shows up to fix it. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, it was a small leak, and um, there, you know, I do maintenance on my pipes a lot, and, I, you know, I think there's going to be a, a big old issue that it would go down to her um, apartment to flood her apartment as, as it did. Okay, so why shouldn't you be responsible for the damages in her apartment? Because in the lease, it says that I'm only, only responsible for fixing what's in the building, the sink, the dishwasher, but the no floor. But no, no private property? No, no private. No private property, not, not her laptop, not her silk sheets. But I believe that this is, this is a case of negligence, Your Honor, and in the lease, it does, it does say that she's responsible if it is her own negligence. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. She's right. There is a responsibility that's reciprocal, right? And so she has a responsibility and you have a responsibility. She pays her rent, you provide the services. And under these circumstances, it would have been great had she had renter's insurance. And if I didn't think you were negligent in this situation, she wouldn't get any money. Because the lease says, you know, you aren't responsible unless there was negligence on your part. I think there was a lot of negligence. And also, I think there needs to be an adjustment on Lamont's rent because he was without a dishwasher for a while and was very inconvenienced at the time. And therefore, I am entering judgment in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $3,000, I'm just gonna round it off. Judgment for the plaintiff for $3,000. We'll stand adjourn. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $3,000. You were negligent in maintaining the property and I'm really glad that I'm getting a settlement. Well, I'm very sorry for all your losses that you had. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.